Katrina here talking with you today about rotary cutters and mats. A rotary cutter is an important tool for any sewer, but especially quilters. It can cut through multiple layers of fabric, allowing you to complete the cutting portion of your project quicker and with greater accuracy than a pair of sewing scissors, as you are lifting the fabric with each cut. You are looking at the two basic styles of cutters, a stick type or a curved handle which is a more ergonomic design. Both of these can be used by right or left-handed sewers, cutters, simply by removing the screw. I always put it down the way it goes back on, take a little nut or washer off, flip it over, put everything back on, and it's ready for a left-handed user. Rotary cutters mainly feature a 45 millimeter blade, such as these, or a 60 millimeter blade, such as these. The 45 millimeter blades will comfortably cut up to six layers of cotton fabric. A 60 millimeter blade will cut up to eight thick layers it's also very useful if you're cutting cuddle, minky, or fleece as indicated here by the markings on this blade. If you do many small projects, this 28 millimeter cutter is ideal. It can get into the small corners and do small curves much easier. Don't ever consider buying or using a rotary cutter that doesn't have a blade cover or a safety on it that will lock. Once you've got that, use it every time. Don't ever think about putting your cutter down with it out. It's an accident waiting for a place to happen. I know this firsthand. Why would you choose one style over another? Most people buy a stick style and Ulfa makes two sides, two st types. This is a straight handle, this is more of a curved handle. It's generally a lower price point. Um, you have uh, gripped here for your finger. Fiskars doesn't have a grip here, but they make these fun, fancy colors in limited editions. The curved style is my favorite, uh, and you, every quilter's got their own favorite their, by their own manufacturer uh, and for different reasons. I like this. I have some uh, hand fatigue when cutting a bit, and this really lessens that. If you have uh, some serious arm or hand issues, you may want to buy this ruler cutter combo. You can see the markings are usable for right or left-handed people. You simply press down and cut. If your budget allows for only one size of cutter, I would recommend a 45 millimeter cutter. It's the most versatile, but again, the style, whether it's curved or stick, is a matter of personal choice. Fiskars states on their website that their blades are made from high-grade, precision ground stainless steel. Olfa's website says that their blades are made from high-quality tungsten carbide tool steel. Even though the blades from different brands are the same size, the opening may be slightly different. I know people that regularly use whatever brand is on sale. I know others that say you must stick with the brand that your cutter is associated with. Both Fiskars and Olfa sell these singly or in five packs. Olfa also makes an endurance blade cuts twice as long, but it is a higher price point. 
a little known blade is this pinking blade. Just like pinking scissors, you get this lovely little edged cut. A dull blade can make your hand and arm tire faster and occasionally leave an uncut thread in a long run. True Cut makes this blade sharpener. It uses, you can use it to sharpen 28, 45, and 60 millimeter blades. It says on the packaging on the inside that it's used to hone a dull blade to near factory sharp edge. You will not be able to achieve a factory machined edge. Damaged and nicks on blades caused by pins, etc. are generally irreparable. Give you a quick idea of how easy this is. It, sh it says on one side, the sharpening stone side, you simply go back and forth. You begin by doing it 20 times, then you turn it around so the other side of the blade is sharpened back and forth 20 times, and then you do it, turn it around, do it 10 times, turn it around, do it 10 times, turn around, do it five, five, and then down to one to get a good sharp blade from it. How do you dispose of your used blades? Because they're extremely dangerous. Uh, Ulfa always comes in a plastic case. I save the empty case and put the old one in, old blade, and I mark it old or bad. I have a friend who puts used, um, and you can often put more than one. This was a five pack, so I'm just waiting to fill it up, and then I close it and pop it in the trash. Fiskars comes in a plastic case. I would just tape it shut, put the used ones in, tape it shut, and put it into the trash. It's just a safety issue. When you use a rotary cutter, a mat is a must. This is the mat I pulled off of my cutting table. My kids are gone. I have a dedicated sewing room. I take my mat and I have, you can see the residual, double-sided tape. I put it down on the table so it doesn't walk on me. Mats must be used and stored flat away from heat, light, and freezing. Um, I guess that means you shouldn't store it outside in the garage in the wintertime. If you need to store your mat when it's not in use, uh, some of them come with holes on the top. You could hang it on the wall or you get a skirt or pants hanger and clip it on at the top to hang it on the wall. Or if you have under a bed where it will store, great. Another thing to factor in is how much space do you have for cutting. This is uh, a 24 by 36 mat. It's the biggest mat we sell at Craft Warehouse. Again, it's how much space do you have to use it on. If you are only able to cut on a kitchen counter, this will be too big for you. From Fiskars, it's pretty basic. Well, sure, any other day it would separate right up on me. There we go. Just an indentation here that fits here and allows it to spin. It makes, if you are not ambidextrous, that would be me. And I need to cut this left side. Mm, not a good thing. I don't want to pick it up and move it. I just spin my little thing. I need to sharpen this blade. There you go. It's way easier to just spin this around for screwing up blocks. Okay, all of the mats that Craft Warehouse sells are self-healing mats. This means after you make a cut on a mat, it closes back up on itself. This is The mats are made of thousands of little tiny beads that close back in. But if you're cutting batting or um, fleece, cuddle, minky, you will see fibers stuck in it. So I went on online and uh, Sarah Marcos 
has on CNT website, CNT publishing website, she likes to use a strip of packing tape wound around her fingers, and this just, I cringe every time I have to do this. Bend your mat and rub your tape over the top until it's all cleared out. Uh, another website from National Quilters and a woman by, who goes by professional pin cushion says to rub a plastic uh, kitchen scrubby. I didn't have one. Or Wendy from Happy Shiny World recommends using this high polymer eraser for getting it all out and getting some of the nasty marks on your mat off until I haven't cleaned mine in a while. Although the National Quilt Quilter Circle and Professor Pincushion don't recommend how often to do this, they recommend conditioning your mat and a quick bath in a solution of vinegar and dish soap, soaking it in cool water, not warm or hot because it will warp your mat, and then um, soaking it and then letting it air dry. Again, check the National Quilter Circle or Professor Pincushion if you want exact, the exact recipe and directions. Okay, to conclude all of our little talk here, you can afford to buy one of each size cutter. Yay for you. If not, choose the rotary cutter by what fits your budget and what is most useful for your style of sewing and the, is most comfortable for you for cutting. Buy your blades. Start off by buying the ones that your cutter makes. Clean out the fibers that collect in your mat soon after you cut batting and fleece. Use and store your mat flat, away from heat and for sunlight. Thanks for joining me for Tooltips.